Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio. Thank you for joining me. Super excited to have you here. Thank you for lending me your ears. Hey, today I want to talk about value. Got to talk about value. Now, did you know that your brain is about 2% of your body weight? What a way to start a podcast. How's that? Your brain is 2% or weighs 2% of your body weight, but it also consumes about 20% of your energy. Wow. That's right. It consumes 20% of your energy. Now you know why you feel tired when you go home. You ever have one of those days where you just go home, you just feel tired. You didn't do anything physical, but your brain is just like, ah, it was on overdrive and your body is depleted and you are tired. That's because that brain, that piece of gray matter between your ears uses a lot of energy. And again, the brain is, is almost like a, you know, an energy hog. It also tries to conserve energy. The brain does everything not to think. Let me say that again. The brain is an energy hog. It doesn't like to use a lot of energy and it does whatever it can not to think, which is why one of the things we often use to make decisions and so do your clients, is something called a heuristic. A heuristic is a rule of thumb. It's almost like a default rule. Keep this in mind. We use rules of thumbs to actually not think. So for example, if you grab a piece of equipment and you weigh it in your hands and it's heavy, your brain says, hmm, heavy equals quality. If it's really light, you go, hmm, light equals cheap. That's a heuristic. If you see a long line at a restaurant, you say, hmm, good restaurant. That's a heuristic. If you see nobody in the restaurant during midday or when it should be full, you go, hmm, not good restaurant. Again, a rule of thumb. See, your brain doesn't want to think. It just wants to make quick decisions. And think about this also, that your client thinks the very same way. They always want to use default rules, also known as heuristics. Now, I bring this up because we have customers that like to go to default all the time. They always want to go to default. See, when a customer can't see the value in your product over somebody else's, their brain immediately defaults to a discount. Yes, can't see different equal give me discount. See how that works? Rule of thumb. That's what customers think. Again, if they can't think of ways that they're different, their default heuristic is always discount. Now, what can we do to sell value? I've talked about this in other podcasts, but let me reiterate. The first thing you need to do is to know your value. You got to know what you're offering too. And this is even bigger. You got to believe in your value. Now I state that when people go, yeah, 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 I know, Victor. It's amazing how many people don't believe in their value or know their value. Number three, you have to be able to prove the value to your customer. Number four, you have to be able to communicate, articulate through presentations that value. And finally, number five, you have to position your value. Now, again, when you have a customer who is asking you for a discount, what they're saying to you, I can translate, is I don't see the differences between that one and this one. My default statement is, can you give me a better price? And when your customer asks you for a better price, you've already lost you lost a value game already. Mac Hannon, the great Mac Hannon, uh, who was the originator of consultative selling, said something as that an ignorant tax is the price you pay for not knowing the value of what you're offering. Let me say that again. He says an ignorant tax, because that's what a discount is. A discount is an ignorant tax you pay for not knowing or articulating or positioning the value of your product. See, the price typically isn't the problem. It's your inability to articulate the value or position the value. Let me say this again, it's important. The price in many cases isn't the problem. Your inability to articulate the value or position the value is the real problem. So when the customer asks for a discount, that is a flag, an indication that you have not positioned value at all and you have not articulated value at all. Now, there's a difference between articulation and positioning, and that's what I want to talk about in this podcast. Articulate value. Here's what most people do. And again, it's a right way of doing it. Here's what our product offers. Here's where we're different. And then you provide some type of quantification number to show, hey, this is why it's different. 
That's why it's different. Here's how we differ. We don't look to be unique. We look to be different. Here's why we're different. Here's what we can do for you. Here's how we can help you. These are articulations of value. And some of us do that well. To, to some extent, a lot of us don't even do it. And that's sad. We don't understand the value and we don't know how to articulate the value. But let's assume that you do know how to articulate the value. You know what your value is. You believe in your value. You can prove your value. You can articulate it. But now you got to learn how to position the value. Now, let's talk about position. Positioning of value is all about context and situation. In a given situation, a customer may look at your product and go, eh, I don't need it. But if you position it correctly, that means their response to you will be, I need that. Because it's always about positioning. Again, you get, for example, let's say you're selling a piece of equipment. It's a printer of some sort, right? A big, massive printer, $300,000 piece of equipment. And the customer may not see the value or see the difference, but what if you positioned it this way? What if you said, Mr. Customer, if this machine were to fail or go down at any moment for 10 to 15 minutes, how would that impact your price, your delivery, your quality, your situation with your existing customers? That positioning statement makes the customer think, about what happens when something doesn't go their way. You see, you frame a storyline, a context. That's positioning. Frame a storyline, a context, so the customer goes, huh, I get it. And they put themselves in that situation. Let me say this again. This is important. It's subtle, but it's important. You can talk about the value of your product, articulation. But when you put the customer in the scene, in the situation, you are now positioning the value. Let me give you another example. Let's say you're selling, you're selling to homeowners, right? You're an HVAC slash R company, right? And all of a sudden, let's say that you sell to commercial places like restaurants. And again, you position that, what happens if this unit goes down for 20, 30 minutes during your lunch period? What happens if you know, this thing goes down during your, biggest, you know, your busiest period at dinner, so forth and so on. What is, give them that scenario, give them that context, that's positioning the value. How fast would you be able to respond? In other words, how fast would a repair company be able to respond to get this fixed right away? Because that could be one of your articulation values that we will repair within 30, 40, 50 minutes, whatever it may be. But you can tie those two together. How about, I don't know, you know, if you look at, you know, proposals, for example, you know, I like to ask customers, you know, how much money do you have riding on this proposal that you just put out there? You know, how much time and money have you invested? And most customers go, I don't know, Victor. I said, well, let me, t and then I give them the context. I said, did you know on average for a proposal of this size, I can only estimate that you must have spent at least 100 hours, dot, 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 dot. And you also must have spent dot, 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 and dot, dot, and also the opportunity cost of things you didn't work on just to do this proposal. Mr. Customer, doesn't it make sense to add a little more value here? In other words, by our software, to make sure that this proposal is the best it can be. And again, what you're trying to do is put the customer in the situation, in the context of what is actually going on. In other words, you want to make them feel the pain, not see the pain, make them feel the pain if things don't go right. Or maybe on a positive note, by putting them in the situation, say, Mr. Customer, if you had this, imagine how you'd be able to help your customers buy from you faster. In other words, imagine how you'd be able to help your end user if you had this product or feature within your system. So in other words, there's the imagine piece also. There's the positive side, which is imagine if you could do this. Imagine if you were able to now do that. And also there's the negative side. If you didn't do that, here's how it may impact you. But what you're trying to do is put the customer in that position. So remember, you got to believe in your value, know your value, prove your value, communicate, articulate your value. But last but not least, you have to be able to put them in the scene. You have to be able to position your value. And that is it for this Sales Influence Podcast. Leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube or wherever you find this wonderful podcast. Let me know what you think. As always, I do appreciate it. And if you haven't checked it out already, check out the Sales Velocity Academy. Go to salesvelocityacademy.com. I will teach you how to sell more faster. It's my online learning management platform available to you 24 hours, 365. All right. On that note, I want to thank you. You guys are great listeners. I've been loving the feedback I've been getting online. So again, thank you very much. And on that note, just remember, selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care.
Hi, I'm Victor Antonio. I'm an author, sales trainer, and keynote speaker. I'm often asked, what makes a great speaker? Is it someone who delivers real content that the audience can use? Is it someone who engages the audience so they're part of the learning experience? Or is it someone who can motivate an audience to push them beyond their comfort zone and discover new abilities? The answer is yes. But the most important thing to remember is that I'm not there to look good. I'm there to make my client look good. Simply put, it's never about me and it's always about them.